Hi everybody, it's Miss Ward and Lavender here, and today is lesson 4.2, Nighttime Investigation. Welcome back, let's get started. Remember, we've been helping Sai figure out what he will see in the sky when he calls his grandma tomorrow. He plans to call at the same time as usual, which is right before he goes to bed. Because he's making that phone call, he wants us to figure out what Sai will see when he calls his grandma tomorrow. And in order to do that, we have to answer this smaller question, which is what will we see in the sky at the same times on different days? So what do we think so far about what the sky looks like at the same time on different days? What have we learned so far about the sky, the same time, but a different day. So I made another sky observation in the evening yesterday at the same time as before. Where did you predict the sun would be when I observed at the same time in the evening? Do you remember what your prediction was? My husband was the one who went out for the pictures which is good because Mr. Fisk, my husband, he's gonna be reading to you guys later today too. So here he is pointing at the sun and it was so bright last night that I actually made the picture really big so you could see what's going on and I even outlined his hand so you can see. Look at how bright the sun was. It's very rare in Seattle. So what did you notice about where the sun was in the sky when Mr. Fisk observed it in the evening? So I first, I said that it was low in the sky. Do you guys agree? Let me go back. Do you agree that, that he was pointing to low? And then What's the next step? So after I say it's low, then I sketch the horizon, right? So where he was standing, right in front of that big orange house. And then there's where he saw that big bright sun. So where should I have placed that paper sun for the evening on our sky mural? So let's go back and look so we want it to be low and right above the orange house on the horizon. So let's put it there. Okay. Do you guys see, can you point to where we should put it on the, um, on the sky mural? Just come and point right to the screen. Where should I put that evening sun? So we're looking for the orange house and then low. Okay, so I put it right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I put it right here. Um, based on our observations, what will we see in the sky at the same time on another day? So we've done two days. What do you think would happen if we did a third day? evidence do you have for your ideas? Why do you think that? So if we look very carefully at the data we organized on our sky mural, we can find a pattern to help us explain what we observed in all of our sky observations, right? Can we see a pattern? What do you notice about both observations for the morning? Yeah, I can't even see both of them because they were right on top of each other. What about both observations for the afternoon? These ones right up here. What do you guys notice about that? How about both observations for the evening? What do you notice about our evening observations? 
Do you guys see a pattern? We're going to read a book now to find out how another scientist organized data from an investigation. And this might give us some more ideas about how we could organize our own data in a different way. As sky scientists, we've been making predictions about what we'll see in the sky. Remember that readers also make predictions, and today we're going to make predictions as we read. And we're really lucky today, you guys, because my husband, Mr. Fisk, the same one that made that sun observation, he's going to come and read to us nighttime investigations. So everybody, let's welcome Mr. Fisk. He's going to come read this book. Hey kids, Mr. Fisk here. I'm going to read you Nighttime Investigation by Meredith Moran. Meet Laura Prue. Laura Prue is a scientist who investigates animals. That means she tries to learn more about animals. We learned Laura liked to learn more about where animals live. I predict that she will investigate where different kinds of animals live. What kind of things are you going to predict? As a child, Laura loved animals. When Laura grew up, she went to school to learn more about them. She learned where animals live, what animals eat, and how animals stay safe. Kangaroo Rats One type of animal that Laura investigates is the kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats are small animals that live in the desert. Kangaroo rats use their two back feet to jump, just like kangaroos. They live in holes that they dig in the ground. Kangaroo rats are nocturnal. That means that they are awake at nighttime. During the daytime, they sleep in their holes. So, as we read, we can check our predictions. So before, I predicted that she would investigate more about where animals live, but my prediction does not match. What did you predict? Collecting and recording data. Laura wanted to know how many kangaroo rats there were in one part of the desert. To collect data on kangaroo rats, Laura and her team of scientists went into the desert at nighttime. Laura and her team put out traps filled with food that kangaroo rats liked to eat. At nighttime, the kangaroo rats went into the traps to eat the food. Does your prediction match what we read? Turn and talk with a partner, or if you don't have anyone there, remember, you can always use someone just like lavender. Laura observed how many kangaroo rats went to eat the food in the traps. She put a tag on each kangaroo rat that went into the trap. That way she could be sure that she only counted the kangaroo rat one time. Remember, when we work as sky scientists, we have been gathering data and organizing it in different ways. Laura also looked at the sky while she was observing the kangaroo rats at nighttime. On some nights, the moon was full and bright in the sky. On other nights, the moon was less full and less bright in the sky. Laura recorded data about the kangaroo rats in a notebook. She also recorded data about what the moon looked like each night. By recording her data, Laura made sure she could look at it again later. Organizing data. Laura organized her data in a data table. The table showed how many kangaroo rats she had counted each night the table also showed how full and bright the moon was each night. So turn and talk with your partner about whether your predictions match what we have read so far. By organizing her data, Laura found a pattern. She noticed that when the moon was full and bright in the sky, more kangaroo rats came out of their holes. When the moon was less full and less bright in the sky, fewer kangaroo rats came out of their holes. Laura wanted to explain the pattern. She thought about why more kangaroo rats would come out when the moon was full and bright in the sky. What Laura learned. 
When the moon is full and bright in the sky, kangaroo rats can see better. The light from the moon may help the kangaroo rats find food. The light from the moon may also help the kangaroo rats watch out for animals that want to eat them. When the moon is less full and less bright in the sky, it is harder for kangaroo rats to see. That might make it harder for the kangaroo rats to find food. That might also make it harder for the kangaroo rats to watch out for animals that want to eat them. This is a fox that eats kangaroo rats. By looking at the night sky, Laura could predict what the kangaroo rats would do. She could predict that more kangaroo rats would come out of their holes when the moon was full and bright. She could predict that more kangaroo rats would stay in their holes when the moon was less full and less bright. Laura found this pattern by investigating. She observed the kangaroo rats and the night sky. She recorded her data so she could look at it again. She organized her data to find a pattern. With this pattern, she could predict what she would observe later. Finding a pattern helped Laura plan her next investigation. Thanks for listening, kids. Great to see you. Thanks, Mr. Fisk. Didn't he do a great job? Let's talk about the pattern that Laura found in her investigation. What did the moon look like when Laura observed the most rats? Go ahead and point to the screen. What did it look like when she saw the fewest rats? What did the moon look like when she saw the fewest rats? Point to the screen again. So let's go ahead and discuss how we can organize our data just like Laura did. So what pattern did Laura discover when she organized her data? When the moon was full, right, she saw the most rats or the least rats? The most rats, that's right. And how about when there was just a little sliver of a moon? Yeah, then she saw the fewest rats. So how did Laura organize data in her investigation? What did she do to put her data in order? Yeah, she made this data table that we were just looking at, and that's how it helped her organize her data. So how could we organize our data from our sky mural in a different way to make our pattern more clear. What do you guys think? So we're gonna use our data to make a data table, just like Laura did, to see if we can find the patterns more clearly. For now, we're gonna focus on the pattern of just how high the sun was in the sky at different times of day. So we're just gonna look at that pattern. So. Let's discuss what goes in each box on the first row of the table, and then we'll record it in our notebook. And in order to do that, we need to be looking at our sky mural and our um, sky mural data table at the same time. You know what I forgot to tell you? Some of you might have this sky mural data table if you got the packet, if you have the notebook, but if you don't have the notebook or packet, it's totally fine. You can just write your answers on a blank piece of paper um, and it's gonna be just, just fine, okay? So let's look at our sky mural data. So what would we write for the morning? So we're just looking at the position of the sun. So in the morning, would we say it's very high, high, medium high, low, or very low, just in the morning? Yeah, I agree, it's low. And I think afternoon might be harder um, because it's kind of right on the line. Do you think we should write very high or high? No, I agree. I think either way would work. And then how about in the evening? Okay, so let's write down those answers. So here I've got my, um, my data table filled out for just day one. We've got low, high, and low. And now we need to do it for day two. Can you guys do it for day two?
I'll give you the data table again, or not the data table. I'll give you the sky mural again, so you guys can look at the sky mural and write your answers for day two. Now this data table is a great way for us to organize information about our observations. What information does our data table show? Did you guys end up writing the same words in all the boxes? So low and low or high and high? If we look at our sky mural data table and we look at our sky mural, right? So if we're looking at these two, what does the sky mural, what information does that show? What information do you think the sky mural doesn't show or maybe doesn't show as well as the data table? What information does the data table show? Which one do you think you would use if you wanted to know where the sun was going to be at a particular time tomorrow? When we took our data from the sky mural and we put it into the data table, we realized that the sun follows the same pattern in the sky every day. That's a great thing to know because now we can tell that to Sai. What would we tell him about what he can expect to see in the sky tomorrow? All right, bye, bye guys. See you next time. Thanks so much.